today on Real Ghost Stories Online. The ghostly intruder. Someone came in, then just simply disappeared. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802. Or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown, and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That indeed it is, and yes, 855-853-4802 is our phone number to share your real ghost stories with us. Of course, you can write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. I uh, I have cameras up all over my house now. Uh, I like on the outside, just facing the doors and that sort of stuff. So anytime that a, a door opens or closes, I can go back and refer to the video. So when I hear those strange doors opening and closing and I go up and there's nobody there, well, let's see how the ghost handle that. Mm-hmm. Although I don't really have many issues with it, but just in case, it's more so to keep up, uh, keep <laughs> right. people out than it is anything else. But, um, but I've always wondered about that, um, and I think we've gotten some images over the years, far less than I think I was expecting that we would get, as ring doorbells and everybody can get security cameras and all that stuff so easily. I thought we'd see more of an influx over the last ten years or so of some of that material, but I, I don't know. I could kind of get you know the orb stuff every now and then, but not so much like the creepy little girl. Uh, with the, like from the ring standing on anyone's porch. Thank goodness for that, by the way. And I think sometimes that when you hear doors close and stuff like that, it's residual sound. Mm-hmm. And so you, you wouldn't necessarily catch any doors actually opening or closing. You're just hearing it happen. I have a cat that likes to uh, bang on the doors. And this is like one of the smallest animals in our house. Uh, it can make some of the most noise uh, in the house. It does not like me if I'm in the bathroom downstairs because the cats live downstairs. Uh, or if I'm in my office, all of a sudden I'll just hear literally like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what are you, does it like have brass knuckles on its paw on the outside of the door? Then I open and the cat's just like, meow, and then walks away. <laughs> like, what do you want? Meow. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's a cat. That's Winnie for you. Let's go to our first phone call of the day at 855-853-4802. Hi. Hi. Uh, big fan of the show. I've uh, been watching it for quite a bit now, and uh, it's always spooky. <laughs> but um, I do have one story for you guys. I am not originally from the United States, and um, I actually <clears throat> had my experience back in Colombia. That's where I'm from. And uh, I actually was, my mom was with me, so we used to share a room when I was little. And um, we were just sleeping, trying to you know, get ready for uh, bed. We went to bed. And uh, in the middle of the night, we both get woken up, uh, the both of us, which makes it even more, a little bit more terrifying, I guess. Um, both of us were going to, uh, uh, sorry, both of us um, woke up from a very loud noise, usually our front door. Uh, we had to push it in. Uh, we had to do this uh, weird trick in order to get it to open uh, from inside and outside. So we heard the door that leads to the outside, to the street, uh, open and closed really loud. So we thought, oh, well, my uncle's home. And for my mom, well, my brother's home. Um, no problem at all. But we didn't hear any footsteps. And we were kind of wondering as to what he was doing, because he was also out with his uh, now wife. Um, and we didn't hear anything. No footsteps, no voice. We just kind of kept waiting, kind of in silence, in the dark, of course. <laughs> um, kind of to hear footsteps and a little, uh, like, shush voice and just talking. We didn't hear anything. So we were kind of weirded out by then. And then we hear this loud, loud footsteps, the very clear, heavy, uh, duty boots, like my uncle used to wear, uh, just walking across our bedroom door. Uh, mind you, the houses in Colombia are not wood, uh, but they're tiles. So the noise is not as much, but when it's something heavy, you can definitely hear it. And um, uh, we were still kind of waiting to hear the voices, but then the footsteps stopped. Um, 
past our door. We still didn't hear anything. So my mom uh, takes out her cell phone and calls my uncle. He answers and we hear music in the background. And he's like, hello? We don't know. We didn't hear anything on our end. Uh, if it was him in our house. So he's like, oh, what's happening? And my mom tells him, well, I think now there's somebody in the house, uh, like a robber or somebody like that. And he's like, oh, well, just stay put. Uh, I'm going to make my way over there. Don't open the door, um, blah, blah, blah. When we hang up, we hear the footsteps again uh, walking towards the bathroom. And the shower turns on. You know, the, the sound of the shower, everything. The turn of the hand, the, the handle gets turned. The water starts heating the tiles in the bathroom. And we're just like, okay, is, the, is this person going to take a shower in the house? What's going on? Uh, then we had the fridge open and close and open again and close again. That happened like two or three times. So we're like, okay, okay, they're helping us out, the, themselves to food. And then after that, we don't hear anything from the quote unquote person. Um, no, no other sounds, no footsteps, nothing else, but the shower still kind of running. About a couple minutes later, well, if like three hours, but I'm pretty sure it was probably just five minutes, um, everything stopped. There's no noise from anything, no footsteps, no shower, no, no bedroom door, nobody went out of, uh, of the front door. And if you're thinking, oh, well, maybe somebody went in through your roof or something like that, I don't know why you would think that, but just as a side note, our ceilings are very, very high. Um, I will almost say 12 feet, maybe a little bit less than that, but they're super, super high. Uh, so there's no, uh, no way somebody could have gone. And we had a patio and uh, kind of a, a middle patio in the middle of the house. So if somebody wanted to go in, they would have basically smacked and drop about 12 feet to the ground. So they would have definitely not survived that. Um, and like I said, the door isn't easy to open either. So a um, person who will try to rob our place would have had, had quite a, a bit of time to try to open that door. Um, so we were kind of kind of weird out. Um, my mom decides that, you know what, I'm kind of done with this. Um, we're both scared, terrified of our, of our minds. And she decides to just turn on our light. Uh, she grabs, uh, grabs the pipe. We were doing renovation at that time. So she just grabs the pipe and opens the door, swings it open. And then I, <laughs> I go with her, of course. Um, just started turning all of the lights in the house. Everything in the house. Everything. Not a single soul was in that house. No footstep marks. Uh, our towels are white, so if you were outside or something like that, you will definitely see the print. Um, nothing. Nothing at all. So, <laughs> now my mom and I are very scared, but uh, <laughs> we just deal with it. We go back to sleep. The next day, when we wake up again, we found out that there was a couple things moved, and some of the things missing. So, in the bathroom, the shower curtain, which we usually keep, uh, keep open, was closed. And the shampoo bottles were turned uh, on their side, not like actually turned, uh, but on their side. And the fridge, uh, there's a couple of items just scrambled. For some reason, apparently the ghost uh, liked eggs somehow, uh, but those were moved as well. A couple, the the jug of milk was also moved. So it was a scary experience because we saw. More, we more like heard, and then the day after saw what happened. But after that, weirdly enough, nothing else happened. That was the first time I ever had a, some sort of experience, and the only time. My house was never haunted. Mind you, my house was built in the, the 1800s uh, in Colombia, so it's been there for a while. But um, nobody else was there. You know, nothing else happened. No other ghost stories. No anything else. It's, it was a very weird and singular experience, which I almost thought I dreamt of, but with my mom being there and her also confirming what was happening, kind of solidified the, the matter that, you know, I didn't dream that. Uh, and I have other stories. Uh, Colombia is very haunted. We got quite a few stories for that, but um, 
thank you so much for listening, guys. And I enjoy your show very much. I appreciate what you guys do every day. I listen to you when I uh, for my commute uh, to work and on my commute back. It's an amazing show. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing that story with us. What's your thoughts? <clears throat> so interesting. And again, like... You know, why would why would a spirit go in the refrigerator and move eggs or, or whatever, you know, whatever that is. But then you start thinking about, well, maybe it wasn't some other energy. Maybe it was their energy. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe something got them worked up. And, uh, you know, you hear stories about this and some people call it poltergeist and all that kind of stuff where an individual in that household or in that area has the ability to influence things to happen. And so you kind of wonder if them getting worked up influenced some of this. Because I can't imagine a ghost going in and like closing a shower curtain. Just for the heck know? of it. Yeah. 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 But, but, but you do hear like in my house, I had a door that was closed. That's never closed. And mm -hmm. so it was hard for me to just blow that off and say it was nothing. Sure. How often do you think uh, ghosts are uh, actually just robberies gone uh, wrong where they're like, Oh shit, there's somebody here. And then they get out of the house and nobody knows the difference. That is really scary when you think of it, because um, and I've never had. The, have you had ever had like a break in or something in your home? I have not. Knock on wood. Yeah. I mean, I've had my car broken into and that you feel pretty violated just from that. Sure. But I mean, to you know, have your house broken into or something like that, the violation that you feel over that and then. <laughs> To figure out that you thought it was ghosts, but you know it was probably just a botched robbery. That would be kind of disappointing <laughs> it's, on two ends. It's it, it, it's a lot like what uh, Charles Manson did with the the creepy crawlies, is what he called it. And him and his followers would go to homes, just move shit around, and then get out. They didn't steal anything. Uh, they didn't, you know, that obviously they're known for murders, but uh, they would do this prior to some of the murders and just screw with people. And I imagine there's a lot of people who had that happen and thought ghosts. Nope, just but, some nutcase nope. and his followers. Just uh, just a cult leader. That's all. Which was which would you rather have? Like a real violent, horrible, demonic type spirit or the Manson clan coming in your house when you're not aware, <laughs> just moving things around. Not killing tough you. Tough question. Just moving things around. It's a tough question, yeah. I don't know. All right, that's going to wrap up this episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you want an ad-free experience, get it through Apple Podcasts right now when you become a premium subscriber or app or uh, through uh, patreon.com slash real ghost stories or even ghostpodcast.com. Until next time, for Todd, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online.